Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, co-founder and chief analyst of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is CUBE alumni, Antonio Neri, Senior Vice President, General Manager of HP Servers and now HP Networking. Uh, welcome back, congratulations CUBE alumni. Always great to have you on. Uh, you got a new, new role, you're running the networking division. So, you know, you, you, don't, you look very chill, very yeah, relaxed. I am, I am. Now, first of all, thank you for having me back again. It's always, good it's always a pleasure to be here. So, great news. So, what's the challenge this year? Obviously, you got some big announcements. We had the uh, Apollo uh, astronaut here last night and releasing the new <laughs> servers. Yes. Give, us, give us a take, uh, a taste of uh, the flavor of HP Discover this year from servers and networking. Well, so, first of all, HP Discover is always an amazing event. Uh, as you can see, you know, the thousands, thousands of customers and partners. And every year is getting better. I mean, you, have, you are actually going to all of them. You know, whether it's Vegas or Europe location, uh, it's getting better. And the customer feedback is overwhelming. The ability to really see all the solutions in one place, the partners that work with HP, and get access to executives to have that conversation about the future. You know, we talk about the data center of today and tomorrow. Uh, is incredible, so it's, it's outstanding. I was really impressed yesterday in the keynote, I actually went in, because we had a, a break, and I went, I went in to see Meg in person, usually I watched on the screen and, and tweet away and comment, do commentating, but I was really impressed, there was a moment there, and, and we've been to all, all the HP Discoveries going back four or five years now, I've, we've seen the transformation, but there was a moment that captured it yesterday, Meg was talking about the turnaround and the tough choices that had to be made, obviously referring to the layoffs, obviously, um, and then she made a statement about the, what they're here were committed for today and the future, and, and I forget what her exact words were, but she was interrupted by the crowd with an applause. Right. Like, like not just like golf clap, it was right. significant. No, Is, I think there's a sense seen of seen that too? Yeah, I, I think, you know, customers realize that uh, HP's back, is back for the long term, not for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. We continue to drive innovation that really matters, and we're really focusing on the problems that customers have today. You know, whether it's security, big data, mobility, and the cloud. And you know, it's all the tough problems between a performance, efficiency, and space. And we talk about reducing power and reduce you know, the, the space, because at the pace we're moving today, this is not sustainable. And so, I mean, customer now sees HP's back, is driving meaningful innovation. We are more custom, much more customer-centric, and, uh, and we have solutions that uh, they see that they really solve the problems. Where's the innovation in the servers? Okay, I gotta, I gotta ask, because everyone, you know, there's two religions going on, right? You have the open compute religion where, and the folks saying servers are dead, you know, they're all going to be integrated into one big god box of some sort, engineered mm -hmm. system. And you see some, some movement of that. You see Tom Joyce doing some stuff with storage. Um, are the old blades and that old model going away faster than you think? Are they going to stick around? What are they going to look like? Where's the innovation for the folks out there who have bought HP servers over the past decade? They know how to buy them, they're buying boxes. What's different? What's the innovation now? You're not going to buy boxes, you're going to buy compute. That's the first thing, right? So I think you need to make sure there's a clear distinction. Uh, I mean, talk about the cloud. You need compute to run the cloud. So it's not about the box, it's about optimizing the compute resources for the right workloads. And that's why in, in our HP server strategy, we have a clear strategy, which is basically to provide the right compute for the right workloads at the right economics. And that means you will, will employ several different architectures. So an example of that, you know, if you think about the workloads in the traditional enterprise, where it's file, print, mail, you know, we have been leading uh, with the right compute platform in that space with the leading brand HP ProLiant, you know, our you know, rack and tower uh, business. If you think about our mission critical type of workloads, what are the characteristics? Scalability, data integrity, and, um, and performance, right? And so that's all about availability, and that's why we have a very broad portfolio of mission critical platforms, where is the, the L580 all the way to the mission critical X86, and in between you have non-stop, with new innovation, by the way, 
Now you know, no stop. You went from a, a MIPS base to a RIGS base to Integrity, and now with X86. So there is constant innovation that takes place because ultimately that matters. Density it, still matters too, right? You got you, well, have, you have density, I, physical I space. The, the, the ultimate density, right? We announced here uh, on Monday the new HP Apollo family for high performance computing and supercomputing. And we drove a tremendous amount of innovation at the rack scale. Because with these new platforms, we are bringing high performance computing and supercomputing to the enterprises of any sizes. And with that platform at the rack scale, we actually, do four, we actually provide four times the density per rack, per square foot, with 28% less power consumption. And in a rack like that, you can actually pack 250 teraflops of compute power. And it's water cooled. And it's water cooled. <laughs> With no, without chillers. Without chillers, and it's our patent innovation, we call it the, okay. the server drive disconnect. So, and your, your hyperscale guys uh, announced a deal with Foxconn. Yes. Right? Which well, is. Well, I was there with Meg. Right. Uh, it was an historic moment, I will say, because it hasn't done before, where you bring the two best companies in the planet when you talk about technology where is HP Engineering Heritage with our services capabilities and our server capabilities with Foxconn Engineering, Manufacturing and Supply Chain in a unique partnership to address a big problem which is scalability at the cost that matters for that, those large service providers. And it was really a business model innovation because ultimately we have the technology. So you were, we're kind of joking before, a little tongue in cheek about the future of cloud is compute, but really not. Right, you see what Martin Fink put up today. Yeah. I mean, essentially, you got the the persistent storage layer moving to the to the compute. Exactly, coming together. Yeah, and so in and the first instantiation of that, believe it or not, was Moonshot, because Moonshot was the first mm -hmm. instance where we brought that concept in the into the architecture. Now the next step is SOC, system on a chip, and then you're going to have the, you know the universal memory. And then you have the photonics, right? And then that's how the architecture is going to evolve over time. And I think HP is very well positioned, right, to deliver against that vision. We have some questions from the crowd in the crowd chat. Go to our new crowdchat.net slash HP Discover announced today. Picked up on Rico.net, Karis, which I wrote a post about it. And also on Forbes, carried the big launch of our, of our new, new venture. Um, it says, at Di Vellante and at Furrier, ask, Antonio, that's a, I added that in yeah. there. Ask about Cisco touting their market share from IDC. Are blades dead? No, blades are not dead at all. And and you think about it, right? Uh, blades is great for enterprise virtualized environments, right? And uh, and so just to put it in perspective, HP has a significant commanding presence around the globe. We are 43% market share with Cisco in the very very low 20s. Uh, so that's global, not North that's America. Global. That's global North America. If you look at North America, we still are the number one vendor in unit market share, even in North America. And so what's going on here is that when you look at the Cisco numbers, you have more, many things included in that market share revenue, which is uh, AUP, which is much higher compared to the traditional blades because in those numbers you include the I think they also include VCE and other right. VMAX That's kind right. of deals. Or v well, no, I, but VCE is legit it's to the, include it's that. But, well, but, I mean, it's not about legit or not legit. I'm just saying yeah. it's a converse system yeah, yeah, driven no. architecture that drives that AUP much higher. And that's the reason why the revenue looks what it oh, is. Oh, you're saying they're counting the whole thing? This is what. Oh, that's the methodology? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I didn't understand that. That's. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be at IDC for a long time. That, that okay. wouldn't have happened if I were still there. <laughs> we call that out. Um, but the the takeaway is that we are still in, in the number one <laughs> blade unit market share. And, you know, and honestly, I think you know, when we look at it, you know, the past few quarters, we have to really refocus on that category. But on the other hand, you know, we have gained share in all other aspects of the business. And when you look at the blade share around the globe, there is no question, right? Uh, the HP blade system is still is the leading, you know, um, infrastructure. So you have that interesting competitive dynamic. And frankly, I think what Cisco did is good for the marketplace. It, you know, it, competition it, is always yeah, good. Yeah, it's always good, right? But I wanted to ask you about another competitor, which is IBM exiting the x86 business, selling that business to Lenovo. Yep. What do you make of that? Um, IBM, devil you know, Lenovo, more like a Dell competitor potentially. What, what, what? What do you think about well, that? Well, I mean, listen, 
um, I respect all the decisions, right? I mean, everybody sure, yeah. looks at their own strategy. I, I truly believe to be in the new style of IT, you have to be in the infrastructure. You have to participate in the infrastructure. Um, obviously, we are pursuing that opportunity very aggressively because you don't want to have customers in the situation they are today. IBM customers now have to make a tough choice. Who is going to be my partner going forward? And we believe HP is the right partner for them because when you look at the IBM portfolio and HP portfolio, a lot of you know good overlap. And if you look at uh, the comprehensive approach we take between services and infrastructure of the cloud, HP can provide the best, you know, best of breed and as well as... Are you winning customers? Let, let me edit yes, your statement, have. if I may, John. Let me edit your statement and see if you... It's still so you, you know, to, be, uh, to participate in the new style of IT, you must be in infrastructure. That's, you what, you, have, that's what you said. You so, have to be a relevant player in the Relevant player in infrastructure. Do you have to be a relevant player in x86 infrastructure? Is that implied in your <laughs> statement? <laughs> I think you have to. Like, yeah. you will have to be in three years from now in uh, ARM-based infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Right. So we you're picking to. up share from IBM on, on their, the, we've talked to some customers, there's been some confusion certainly uh, around, you know, because their high end's not coming in fast enough. Our customers moving to HP, are you guys winning business because of that move? We have signed many, many IBM customers and many, many IBM partners. And as a part of that, where is the, you know, mission critical customers, uh, where is x86 customers, you know, absolutely, we have gained, um, you know, those are customers to HP. And in fact, at this event, we actually brought uh, IBM customers and partners to a specific set of sessions to show them that HP can be their partner going forward. What's the biggest surprise to you this year, obviously besides getting the networking division around <laughs> new responsibility, that's a, a big surprise, big surprise and opportunity as well. Um, outside of the networking uh, division which you're now running, what, are the, what is the big surprise that you've had this year uh, in the business, uh, within HP, it could be outside HP, what, 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 what surprised you this year? I don't think a surprise because listen, uh, you know, we have been very clear in the many years we have been here with you, telling the story, right? What is our strategy and how we're going to pursue it? Uh, so, but is is what is is a pleasant surprise per se that we all of this is coming together. You know, we were here last year with you, and we talked about the story around the cloud. We were together in Barcelona, right? And we talk about the story around you know uh, service provider exploding and the amount of data we need to go manage. If you think about this event, right, and the announcements we made in the last four to six weeks. A very clear strategy around the HP cloud. Um, a clear strategy around our compute uh, strategy. A clear strategy around networking with software-defined networking. And the announcement we made this week uh, as a part of the HP Helium with the virtual cloud networking, SDN applications. So, and, and a broader set of things we bring to the market. And the innovation you see here, right, is is to your point, it's something that happened many years back. It's not like something we did in the last six months. So it's a clear agenda and a clear direction. How about services, your sort of former business? You <laughs> yeah. were there when um, services and, and the enterprise group came together yes. and aligned, you made a you rationalized, first interview. Rationalized, that's right, you rationalized a lot of services. How has that all affected your activity? Well, actually, it's a great compliment, right? Because you think about it, you know, in that, when I was running technology service, we made a clear decision to transform our portfolio. And what we did over a period of time is introduce new services for the new style of IT. So whether it's foundation care, proactive care, data center care, all the transformation services around professional services and consulting, all gear around big data, cloud, mobility, and security. And, uh, and we see tremendous traction. And in fact, in many cases, you have to lead with services to really drive that customer in their journey to the cloud. It's not just selling you know, the solutions. You have to lead with services, and then the solution comes next. So um, as I head now networking and, serv and servers, there is services part of my core agenda. <laughs> How we enable <laughs> services to be you know, essential in that journey with our customers. And yeah. um, you know, and obviously, it's, it's making a difference for us. You know, we were joking um, when uh, before, uh, last time we talked. 
when I worked at HP back in the 80s, and you, you were around a long time HP here, customer satisfaction and services was, was really paramount to HP. It's really the core of the company, the yeah. soul uh, of HP. And one of the things we like about talking to you is you have that mindset, and you think about the customer perspective. So I got to ask you the question, um, and this is a question that shouldn't get any core messaging to come out, but more of a personal perspective mm -hmm. around this. From a customer's perspective, what does the word hybrid mean to you? Not from HP, from the customer. If you're out in the customer, what does the word hybrid mean to you? That's a I, big trend I right now. I mean, it's flexibility. In my, in my head, it's flexibility. Flexibility to adopt different architectures, different business models, but yet be able to integrate those choices in a cohesive way. So hybrid to me is all about flexibility. So if you talk about hybrid cloud, now we call it HP cloud, right? Where you, do, you host the, uh, the one load on premise, or you do it in a virtual private cloud, or you do it in a public cloud, it gives you the flexibility to manage those one loads in the place you think is most appropriate, based on the economics, but also be able to manage that data and that uh, experience in a seamless integrated way. So to me, hybrid is basically flexibility. We were talking to Sargalai earlier about uh, OpenStack and um, the variety of things with uh, Helion and things that, that, that grew organically out of the industry. So being a high quality kind of uh, person you are with HP, everything's about high quality. He made a comment, he said, oh, what's broken in OpenStack, what needs to get fixed? Networking. And he's got scar tissue to prove it, he said. So I got to ask you, what are you guys doing with networking and to speed up the, the marketplace because the open source is a driver right now in right. the innovation, so you got a lot of stuff in the kitchen, in the back closet possibly. You got NFV now, you got Bethany working with, uh, on the telco side, clean sheet of paper, billion dollar opportunity with the telcos, but you know, for existing customers who are looking at the hybrid cloud as a bridge to the future. Yeah. They need quality, so how, yeah. what, what are you guys doing on the networking front? Can you comment on that? Well, listen, you know, the announcement we made this week is kind of interesting because we announced the virtual cloud networking based on open stack. So our strategy around the SDN is all based on open source. So I think that's more than that is difficult to explain. I mean, it's, it's based on open standard. If you start at the bottom with the infrastructure layer, we adopt open, st open standards, right, uh, several years ago with our, uh, you have the final alarm, by the way. <laughs> Uh, with the open flow, right? And then, you know, with that. So he just heard the alert because yeah. open source, when you said your open source business model, <laughs> you your entire uh, the bells went off. <laughs> hey, this is only but, a test. Uh, <laughs> but if you think about it, right, we adopted open, open, open standards many years ago. And, um, you know, and that's why, you know, started with open flow, now with open source, for our billion stack with the networking. And we have been very consistent in our strategy, so we, we obviously want to drive the open source uh, approach. And today, even Martin, think about it right where he announced you know, the concept of the machine, and he said, now we're going to drive a new operating system based on open source, and we want to roll people from the community. I mean, I love that announcement, right? That, that, that to me is innovation, it's invention, it's John, I've said how many times that HP's got to get back to its roots and, and invent, and I think Martin's, presentation was a good example of, of right. HP's uh, invention ethos. Um, I want to ask you a question specifically about the hyperscale market. I ask this a lot, and I want to get your opinion, Antonio. The hyperscale is bleeding into the enterprise in, in some regards, and you guys are participating now in that in a fairly big way. Whether it's Moonshot, you've got a, a, a dedicated density server, hyperscale group, the Foxconn deal. How much of that existing market is ripe for those types of systems, the hyperscale-like systems that you're pursuing, and others are pursuing, by the way, whether they're ODMs or, or et cetera. How much of the market do you think that they can grab? Is it a, you know, is it a, is it a big, large chunk? Is it a third, a half, more? Well, I, I think, listen, that's a market you have to participate. Again, mm -hmm. going back to the infrastructure comment I made before, that market is going to double over the next five years. Mm -hmm in the um, meaning the town, the addressable town. Right. If you look at the growth uh, today, that market's growing between 20 and 35%, depending on the quarter. Uh, some is driven because, you know, these large service providers do big buys, right. depending on the seasonality of the business. Also, it's tied to their services in the cloud. Um, so, definitely it's a different type of economics, but ultimately, you have to be able to provide, you know, a comprehensive set of solutions and you have to be able to customize those solutions because ultimately it's all about 
you know, uh, adapted infrastructure to the app. And most of these apps, right, are designed with new architectures, which means, you know, you can drive the economy between management, the app, and the infrastructure to a level that wasn't done before. And that's why I said we are moving away from a server era to a compute era. And that compute era is going to be dominated by workload-centric approach. And the hyperscale will be dominated really by those apps who are going to run the cloud. And, they, and those service providers are going to optimize that app to the infrastructure to drive the maximum possible performance, power efficiency, and space. Mm -hmm. Antonio, what's your objective this year? We're going to close out the segment. Let's go into your plan. What's your top three objectives per group, server and networking? Can you talk high level uh, without giving away the secret sauce? Yeah. No, well, listen, you know, uh, first of all is to continue to be very customer centric in everything we do. Um, you're going to continue to see tremendous amount of innovation, whether it's server or networking, and you're going to see more integrated architectures as, as you go forward. I think you know the fabrics with, with the compute integration is going to happen. Um, it, it's just you know the way things are going to work. Um, but customers will continue to see that we will continue to lead the transformation of both the networking industry with our approach in um, industry standards, whether it's infrastructure or software-defined networking, all the way to the cloud or what is you know, the right compute for the right one load. We are very excited to cover the Moonshot launch, so I got to ask you the status of Moonshot, obviously Calzada kind of went away. Yeah. Um, what's the update there? Who's involved? What's the roadmap look right. like? Well, you, what's you, the status? The Moonshot booth is hidden behind, so you can see <laughs> how much activity you see. <laughs> Um, I mean, we love the product, but I mean, yeah. is that, does it have a big future there? Has it been pivoted? It has pivoted? a tremendous future, tremendous future. In fact, we already have many, many, many customers that already have done deployments on Moonshot. Some of them even scaling it, and some of them, you know, continue to optimize their workloads to Moonshot. Uh, and the good news with Moonshot, because it's such a flexible architecture, you can, you can optimize not just the cartridge, the server, but also the solution that goes around it. And so this week we announced a new cartridge, right, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, video transcoding. Um, and you're going to see more and more solutions coming down the road. I think, you know, now is an acceleration you're going to see over the next 12 months. Okay, cool. Final word, share with the folks out there, um, from your industry perspective, you can, you can take your HP hat off if you want, but give me, I want to get your personal perspective. Why is this moment in time so important in, in uh, in this inflection point, if you look at all the major inflection points, yep. different ways of innovation, different platforms, one, two, three, four, whatever, whatever lingo you want to use, but we are at a really interesting point in time. Yep. Why is this moment in, in history for the world, for technology, yep. so important? Yeah. Well, first of all, it is almost a, a privilege to be at this point in time in this industry. It, it doesn't happen that often. You know, the cycles before were kind of 20 years at a time. Now we're talking about five to seven years at a time. Um, we had Thomas Freeman here, you know. He said, you know, a very nice thing. He said, listen, when I wrote The World is Flat, and I look at all my appendix there, you know, and I look at all the letters, Facebook was not there. Yeah. Seven years later. Skype was a spelling error. Yeah, Skype was a spelling error, right? <laughs> so the speed of change, it's so impressive, right? And, um, and so... The world is flat now. The, the, yeah, exactly, yeah. the world is flat now. But the point is that you got to move fast. And, um, and this is why really speed matters. But matters in a context of a strategy. You want to go drive and make the right investments going forward. And I think, you know, for us, I think we are very well positioned as HP uh, to drive that new style of IT and, and be able to deliver the innovation that's required to deliver at the speed that customer needs. Because as I said before, to, to, uh, to out-compete, you have to out-compute, which means that you have to be ahead of the time, uh, all, at least one, two steps ahead all the time. I, I think HP's holding back some cards. You know, Dave, Dave always likes me when well, I come to Well, the good news you're going to be here again. I, you know, I, I, because now, I have the history of HP, and I, I can see the smoke signals, I see people working in the back room. I can't put their faces on them yet, but <laughs> I know you guys are holding some cards. I'm trying to get the data. I just feel like this is a really news, serious. Six months from now, you're going to be here again. Yeah, I think you kind of, Meg's walking the line. You know, we're, we're moving away from the icebergs into the Caribbean water, nice warm waters <laughs> with no icebergs, but I think you guys have some rabbits you're going to pull out of your hat. I mean, it's, it's too fast, it's too much action, you got way too much 
IP uh, here in the company, and then you got the money to do do M and A. So I, I just I just have the feeling. So uh, we'll continue to speculate. <laughs> Time will tell. Time will tell. We'll be yeah. covering. It. This is the Cube, Antonio Neri, great guest. Uh, thanks for being candid Thank and Thank taking the time to, to meet with us. This is the Cube. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, extracting the seeds from the noise. Antonio Neri, senior vice president of two divisions now: servers and networking. Soon to be one, probably, because it's all coming together anyway. We'll be right back after this short break.